Welcome back everybody. Okay, we have three buckets of ore to test today. The first one has some really nice quartz veining in it, or uh, quartz crystals. Nice crystalline structure. Let's see if I can get some of those quartz crystals out and save them. But, uh, looks like it should have some surface gold on it. Second sample. Looks promising. Of course, everything looks promising when you pick it up. And the third sample, these larger rocks, they look to have the material on it. We'll look at them under the microscope and see what they see what they show. All right, the sample with the crystalline rock in it. We'll call that sample A. Another sample with the smaller rocks in it. We'll call that sample B. And of course the third one with the larger rocks in it, we'll call that sample 7. Uh, I mean C. Yeah, that's right, C. And here's the first rock we're going to look at. This is out of sample A, of course. Usually rocks don't come with letters pre-stamped on them. So we'll look at that under the microscope and see what we get. All right, on this location of the rock, I spotted a few samples. Two small pieces of gold. There's a couple other ones in there too. If you want to look, you can find them. Uh, the next uh, section of the rock I looked at had several pieces. Some very small, some not so small, but uh, you know, still microscopic in size. I didn't bother putting an arrow on all of them. I'm going to let you look at this one. Tell me what you think those are that are circled in red. Uh, you're wrong, they're both uh, garbage. The one circled in red, one's a sulfide and one's just a piece of quartz. The arrows indicate the gold, or at least that which I perceive to be gold. Well, I've taken this rock outside and crushed it up. We're going to screen it out here. Sorry, no dance crushing today. Not in the mood. We're going to screen this out just to see if we got any nuggets in there. I really doubt it, but heaven forbid I throw it away and there's a big nugget in there. So we'll just mix this all in as one sample and uh, process it as is. Our acids will remove any of the uh, wanted materials that's on the surface of the chunky pieces. And now it's time to glove up and start uh, adding our acid. We need just about enough muriatic acid to cover the, the material. We don't want to put in too much and, and waste it. And then we'll set it up on the burner to start warming up. Acid works a lot better when it's warm. Now here's our second uh, sample. I'll let you take a look at it and see if you can pick out the gold spots. Remember we're looking for very small pieces. Now this one, that big spot in the middle, yeah that's just a piece of quartz that's a different color. It, it glared out at me and I was fooled too. Now this one has a couple pieces in it. Can you pick them out? There they are. There's also some smaller pieces, but who wants to count those? They're so small. Here's our second sample, all crushed up. And he wants to stick in the tube. So I just use my handy crowbar. Yeah, just bang it a few times. That's how I fix most of my electronic equipment up here, too. If it doesn't work after three bangs, it's not worth fixing. Checking for nuggets. Nothing there, of course. 
and we'll just put this material in another beaker. Now I did mark these beakers A, B, and C coinciding with the the sample letters that we put on the buckets. So we should be able to keep track of it. Anyhow, here's third sample. A couple of small pieces in there. I see maybe three, four, or five pieces. Those big things that look like gold flakes or not. Here's another part of that sample. And this one has this big red line through it. I'm, I think that might be uh, iron. We'll have to see how our sample fluids come out. So I've got all three samples now juiced up with muriatic acid. So we'll stir them up, put them in the uh, heat, and uh, let them cook for a while. Apparently the second sample had a bunch of sulfides in it because you see me suddenly clear out of the room. Yeah, I got a got a whiff of sulfur gas so I cleared out and caught my breath. When I came back into the room I was holding my breath, grabbed the beaker and stirred it some more, then put it in the fume hood. Then left the uh, room again to fresh air and let the room air out. Well, it's been long enough, so we're going to add our nitric acid, creating our aqua regia, which will dissolve our gold. Hopefully put it into solution, so we'll be able to test and recover it. Putting in about 2 milliliters of nitric acid. This is concentrated nitric acid, so you don't need a lot. If you use a lot of nitric acid, then you're going to need a lot of sulfamic acid or urea to denox your solution before trying to precipitate. Okay, here's the solution that gave me that big whiff of sulfur gas. That stuff on the top is sulfur from the um, sulfides that were in it. Probably uh, iron sulfide or fool's gold. Uh, fool's gold is discernible from real gold because it has that boxy structure I talked about earlier. Very cubic looking. So we're going to add our nitric to this and set it back on the heat and let the nitric do its thing. Throughout this procedure I frequently stirred the solutions to make sure that nothing got trapped under the gravel at the bottom. We wanted to make sure we got all we could. Now this is bad lab practice. You do not leave a utensil sticking out of a beaker of acid. It makes it very easy to tip over. I didn't do it this time, but give me a chance. Here are the three solutions cooking away in the uh, fume hood. Exciting, isn't it? Once the cooking was done, I decided to run each of these samples through a filter using my uh, Buckner filter and my vacuum flask. Makes the whole process of filtering a lot quicker. So we're going to pour the solution in there, and filter it out, follow it up with a couple of rinses of water, just to make sure we get everything out of that beaker that we can. And this is what we've got left over, some nice clean shiny rocks. Here are the three filtered and cleaned samples. And we're going to take six milliliters of each sample and place it in a test tube for testing. 
You can tell I'm a professional. I have a test tube rack with test tubes. That's how you know if you're a real scientist. Yeah, I'm a professional. You want to stop playing with the stuff in the beakers and just get it into the test tubes? Thank you. So from left to right we have all three samples A, B, and C in such order. You'll notice how sample C, the one that I thought had iron in the rock, is much darker. I don't know if I can test for iron or if I'm just going to have to push on with it and see what we get. But the stannous chloride should uh, tell us what we have. If there's no gold, the stannous won't react. Well, the stannous reacts with gold, platinum, and palladium. So, uh, it won't react with iron. So here's our stannous in the first sample. Wow, that really turned purple real quick. That's a good sign. Second sample. Here we get in purple too. It's another good sign. Sample C. Nothing really. Started off dark and it's kind of staying that way. But I didn't notice a pronounced color change so we can't really call that one a win. Sample B, it turned color, but it's kind of fizzing like there's still a chemical reaction going on. Sample A, no chemical reaction happening, and it's a dark color. That's going to be a winner. We're going to have to process that whole bucket and see how much gold we get out of it. Now, just as a matter of course, we're going to do the spoon test. Just a few drops of uh, each solution in each spoon and then we'll apply our stannous chloride and see what we get. Now using the spoons means that you don't have to have so much solution. You can use less acid and a smaller sample to generate your fluids and still be able to test them. Okay once again right to left A, B, and C. I'm going to put our stannous chloride in and see what results we get. That looks good. It's a nice dark color happening there. That one too. And the third one, nothing really. I don't know if you realized it. I didn't at the time, but I haven't been denoxing these uh, tests. So we're going to go back over and do the test again. And we're going to denox each of the spoons here. We're going to be using urea. We're going to put a few grains of urea into each one. And then we'll give it a little bit of stir using a pipette. Get the urea dissolved in it. And then uh, apply our stannous chloride and see what our results are. Now between stirring each sample I'm washing off the pipette to make sure I don't cross-contaminate. Now we'll let these sit a little bit. Let the uh, urea kill off the nitric acid. And then we put our stannous chloride solution in. See what our results are. Okay, sample A indicates that there is gold. Sample B is kind of unchanged. We'll go through and stir these and see if we get the same results. Wash off the pipette. Don't cross-contaminate. You see after denoxing sample B does not indicate as much gold as it did before. And sample C 
has actually gone clear. So we lose on sample C, but A and B are processable. Now what I've done here is I've mixed all of our leftover solution together, ran it through filter again, and we're going to combine it all into one beaker, add some uh, SMB, sodium metabisulfite, and hopefully precipitate out some gold. Nice clear solution. Hopefully we got gold in it and hopefully we can get it out. So here's the SMB, sodium metabisulfite. Now you're adding this sulfur containing powder to a powder that or to a solution that contains chlorine in hydrochloric acid form. And they combine together and they'll put out chlorine and sulfur gas. So this is not something you want to be doing without holding your breath or without a gas mask or if you're not in a fume hood I wouldn't do it. I have a respirator on right now you can't see it it's off camera but uh, this is some really noxious gas. Now for some reason I'm getting this pink material on the top of my solution I don't know I might be overdosing my uh, my solution with uh, SMB. Anyhow, I let this sit for overnight, and all I got was a white precipitate. But uh, in case there is some gold in there, I am going to take that precipitated material, filter it out, and run it through my furnace in a cupel uh, just to try and squeeze out any gold that might be there. So the next thing in line is to crush up our good samples of ore and uh, we'll be running those through our mill and we'll process them and see if we can get a big chunk of gold. Well, that'll do it for this time. Hope you enjoyed the ride. See ya!